we keep passing all these amazing sites and we're like, Patrick, pull over, we gotta look at this. And he's like, no, just wait, it gets better. The Carretera Austral is one of the most scenic highways in the world, running 1,240 kilometers south through the rural Patagonia in Chile. This road is also known as Route 7, and is considered one of the most complicated infrastructure projects in Chile during the 20th century, and formally opened up the Patagonia region for tourism in the 1980s. Route 7 is home to untouched forests, dramatic fjords, and stunning glaciers. And this week, we are taking you with us to see some of the best this iconic road has to offer. This is a story about a first Carretera Austral road trip, from Coyhaique to Puerto Cisnes. This trip began just a few days before departure, when we met our new neighbor Patrick at our favorite new coffee shop, Pellegrinos. We had just moved to Chile and were having a hard time getting out of Coyhaique due to the high rental car prices. Patrick was excited that we were in town for so long and wasted no time in planning an epic road trip for us. Welcome to the road trip. It's tea time. It's tea time, buddy. Good morning. Good morning. After saying goodbye to our new Chilean pets, Tigre and Kitty, we hopped in the car with Patrick to start the road trip. How we met Patrick is kind of a funny story. Tourists are coming back to Coyhaique and I'm in the place, wow, it's kind of the Starbucks, uh, the homologous Starbucks for, for Coyhaique and I see these people who clearly are not Chileans and uh, they're uh, dressed strangely. Uh, and uh, in sandals, <laughs> no one wears in town. And I, I thought, well, maybe they're German, maybe they're Swedish or something. Then I heard you talk, and I went, well, there's Americans. So that started the discussion. And I realized that they came to Koyaki for a month. Well, nobody just comes to hang out in Koyaki for a month. It's a town of about maybe five days of interest. So I uh, decided to uh, take them under my wing to show them uh, some of the things they would never see. And here we are on the highway. So that's that. Like most road trips, stop number one is coffee. We had only made it about 45 minutes from Coyhaique when we stopped for a coffee break in Puerto Aysén. Patrick had previously stayed at the impressive Loberia del Sur Hotel and knew that we were in for a treat with the views of the fjord and the views of the interior of the building. Not to mention, we had great coffee. Even if you're not a coffee drinker and you're not staying at the hotel, we recommend driving by just to check it out and see the amazing views from the harbor. J-A-R, it's dulce de leche that you can get caramelized milk. It's mm. pretty good. I mean, these are plastic, but... Oh look, it's a friend. After our caffeine stop, we hit the road again heading north on the Carretera Austral, en route for Puerto Cisnes. Patrick then surprised us with another stop, Cascada Barba de Viejo. This was a short drive down a gravel road followed by an easy rainforest-like hike to a stunning waterfall with multiple levels and multiple viewpoints. Voila. All right, so Patrick has taken us to the first stop of the day, which is a beautiful waterfall at a park. Parque Iken. Mm -hmm. And we are so thankful he has driven us all over the place, giving us the history of everywhere as we go. He's so knowledgeable so kind. and very good to us. Yeah. So. All right, let's go check out the waterfall. Yeah, cows eat it, but nobody else eats it. <laughs> mm. The most incredible part was how dramatic the scenery change was. We lived in a very dry place. And not long after hitting the road, it felt and looked like we were in a rainforest. Because of the unique weather patterns in Southern Chile, it's not uncommon to have dramatically different climates in such close proximity. Although this hike was short, the waterfall was incredible and it was our first time being able to see some of the unique plants throughout Patagonia. When our exercise to the waterfall was over, 
we continued the scenic drive to our home for the weekend, Puerto Cisnes, a small port town nestled among the fjords on the South Pacific Ocean. Despite the water access, the town is not quite known for being a beach destination. Given that it rarely breaks 65 degrees Fahrenheit, even in the summer months, and it experiences on average 123 inches, or 3,142 milliliters of rain per year. That's three times more than Seattle, Washington. Nonetheless, it's absolutely beautiful. After checking into our hotel, we were antsy to get exploring. Today, it appears, was one of those raining days that we have heard so much about. We began by crossing the suspension bridge in the park, and then we made our way to the coastline. I love a good suspension bridge. <laughs> there were a ton of people there. Well, there's both Shona. A group of nomadic indigenous people that lived in these islands. The indigenous people of this region were nomadic, having mastered the art of canoe building, water travel, and sea hunting. They traversed the fjords of southern Chile and learned how to thrive in a harsh climate and a food scarce land. The vegetation is so lush, the ocean and the fjords are stunning. We're just in awe at this beautiful port town. We took a long walk along the boardwalk and then we continued to the Balneario, or what we like to call the Boat Graveyard. We're not quite sure of the story here, but there are a ton of boats. Abandoned, maroon, sunk, in repairs. Mixed with the gray skies, this place was pretty creepy, but also, it was awesome. Unfortunately, we spent a bit too long there, so we were caught in the rain on the way home. Taking shelter from the cold, we stopped for dinner at Restaurant New Carretera Austral, where I tried the local merluza fish for the first time and Mare had some salmon. It lived up to all the hype. Why does the Camino weather follow us everywhere we go? Our hotel for the two nights was extremely peaceful. It was wooden, dark, with only about a half dozen rooms, two of which were occupied by us and Patrick. There was a fire lit when we arrived, so we fed the fire and continued to swap stories until our eyelids were heavy and the room was warm. This might have been one of the best days in Chile so far. We had probably one of our top five favorite days we've had in Chile so far. It's just magical. I can't express how happy I am that today was today or how excited I am for the next two days of our road trip around the southern part of Chile. To get to have somebody that lives here, that knows the language, that knows the history, that's invested his time to getting to know the area better, take time to tour us around. I mean, how did we get so lucky? He brought us some baked goods. When we stopped for lunch along the car ride, not only did we have brownies, but we also had... So it's just cool that you can meet one person and completely change the course of your trip. Not only did we have brownies, but we also had chocolate chip cookies that he brought. And tomorrow morning at 8 a.m., the guy's making us breakfast. And then Patrick's taking us to a tour to another area that I don't know the name of, but it'll be great. So that was day one of the adventures. Stay tuned for tomorrow. Our plan today was to wake up and go for a run. However, when the alarm went off, we had a very tranquil rain, so we did not. 30 minutes later, the rain stopped, so I went, got up and went for a walk. It was brisk and cold, but there's a little hike right outside of where our hostel is, and that's where I found the Chucao Taparulo. A new bird that apparently gets real close to you, but is silent when it's next to you, which causes frustration for audio learners like me. But then it gets further away from you and it has a very pretty song. Good morning. We are off on day two adventures with Patrick. And I'm gonna let him tell you where we're going today because I don't actually know, uh, which is part of the excitement of today. Today we're going to a little north here. We do have a big hill to go over and then down to the town of Puyuapi where there are hot springs right along the fjord. And then we're also gonna have a look at the hanging glacier on our way. 
either back or two. All right. So it should be fun. Let's do it. I'm bringing full battle gear just in case. <laughs> you never know. Full battle. So as we've been hanging out with Patrick, he's been teaching me a lot of Spanish words, and I'm a very visual learner. So I've decided to start writing down all the words he's taught me. So we'll see how many new words we have today. So far we're at three, and we've been in the car for five minutes. <laughs> Chili's great. There are so many waterfalls here, you can't even count them all. Today, we are setting out for Parque Nacional Keulat, the gem of our road trip. The road to get here was long, winding, and steep, going both up and down. Dirt in some spots. And even despite the rainstorm, we were undismayed. We were just filled with excitement. This national park is famous for its beauty and its seclusion. We were thrilled to finally get to experience it. And we were blessed that the rain had subsided by the time we pulled into the park. Nothing but sunshine, or at least clouds. As you can see, the parking lot is pretty empty right now. That's not normal, we just got here early, and we recommend you do the same. It's hard to believe we're doing an activity because the drive here was so amazing that I felt like that was the highlight of the day. So I can't wait to see what this park has to bring. So you need your passport to check into this park. Luckily we had photos of the passport and they didn't give us a hassle at all. So whether we're lucky or they're nice or that's just the procedure, we're not too sure. But bring a passport or photo your passport if you come into the national parks. Parque Nacional Keulat is a massive and beautiful park, home to untouched evergreen forest, stunning lakes, and most importantly to us, the Keulat Hanging Glacier. There are several glaciers in the park, but this one is by far the most iconic, and in our opinion, the most beautiful. Cuatro personas on this amazing bridge. I see why they limit the people. It, uh, it looks pretty treacherous, but wow is this river gushing, it's beautiful. There are two ways to view the Hanging Glacier, by boat or by foot. For budget and for fun reasons, we opted for the footpath, Mirador Ventisquero Colgante Trail. This trail climbs a thousand feet over three and a half miles of rainforest, and it offers an incredible peekaboo views of the Blue Lakes as you climb. This bridge is amazing. Out of courtesy, we recommend not taking too long on the bridge as it is a bottleneck for hikers going up or returning. This region was first explored in 1766 by a Jesuit priest who was searching for the mythical city of the Caesars, allegedly located somewhere in Patagonia. It was an El Dorado-like lure that has yet to be discovered. Patrick might be the most fit hiking friend we know. He runs up these trails. Before we even made it to the top, we all agreed this was not necessarily an easy hike, especially relative to the waterfall that we hiked to yesterday. So be prepared with snacks, water, and maybe even some hiking chocolate. We knew that the top was getting closer as we noticed a crowd of people ooing and awing. It was the Quayulat Hanging Glacier. Even more beautiful than the glacier was the waterfall cascading down. We spent an awful lot of time up at this viewpoint, having snacks and taking in the views. up the hike. That hike gets an A plus. 
it's amazing. And now we are off to get lunch in the nearby town. Patrick, what town are we getting lunch in? Puyuapi. There you go. There's definitely a benefit to getting here early. When we arrived, we were like one of the only cars in the parking lot and now the whole place is full. And I think we said hola about 50 times on the way down. So we got a lot of good practice in for that. After descending the trail and reversing over the suspension bridge, we set course for Poyohuapi, a small fishing town at the end of a fjord. It was a picturesque town and we were blessed with a little bit of sunshine. Poyohuapi was our lunch destination, where we were treated to some fine Chilean cuisine, and our minds were blown. Leaving town, we planned to spend some time at the thermal baths not too far away. But when we drove past, the parking lot was overflowing. So we decided to spend more time exploring Puerto Cisnes. Dinner tonight was at restaurant Penchita. There was more merluza and salmon. Both meals in this town were absolutely stellar. It was another evening spent fireside, reflecting on the amazing day. Do you ever just sit in front of a fire in a small town in Chile? that you only got to because you visited another small town in Chile where you met a seven-year-old man, became your friend, don't want to take you on a trip. And so somehow you ended up in a small town in Chile in front of a fireplace after a day of hiking in a national park. What other lives? How did this happen to us? <laughs> I really hope this continues to happen to us. Today was amazing. Patrick, we're just overwhelmed by how much love you've shown us and how excited you are to share your country with us and have welcomed us to Chile. It was a good day. It is our final day in Puerto Cisnes. Did I get it right? Puerto Cisnes. Yes, Puerto Cisnes. Puerto Cisnes. Yay. Yes, and you. we're gonna go do one last hike in town before heading home and hopefully stopping for some fun adventures along the way. Breakfast today was identical to the first day, filling and predictable. After breakfast, we embarked on another trail in town taking us to the Mirador dos Lagunas. It was a flat and muddy trail, ending with a view of two lagoons and a lot of mosquitoes. If you're already in town, we recommend it, but it's not scenic enough to take a detour for. The drive back was the most scenic drive we had had because the sun was finally out. This was cause for a number of stops and plenty of viewpoints. One of these viewpoints was Laguna de la Torres, just north of our home on Route 7. Here, we met some unlikely Swiss friends. We just stopped along the side of the road on the way home and we met three awesome people and they've been biking for four months from Peru all the way down to the very bottom part of Chile. And they're gonna be coming through our town this weekend, so we're gonna hang out with them. So great. These new friends invited us to join them in a few days as they biked to Cerro Castillo, about two hours south of Coyhaique, on the same Catera Austral Highway. This set the scene for our next Chilean adventure and the least romantic Valentine's Day ever. Join us next week to hear that story.